And for our uh, rock right here, I'm gonna make it a little bit different. I'm gonna add some black in my uh, brown. And uh, that's gonna be another uh, suitable color for my um, rock. But that's because this rock is bigger, so I can do it a little bit uh, different. So I'll just add some color to it. So, and that's gonna be my rocky rock color. It's um kind of black and brown create that uh, darker brown. Uh, which is uh, will be uh, a little bit more appropriate for this bigger rock because those ones are they are smaller they can be more lighter ones so this one will be darker but because the lights come from the top I will add some yellow uh, for the top so then it's gonna kind of show us the light on um, easy to make it lighter when it's really dark so uh, that's why I'm telling you be careful when you choose the color so that you don't have to over layer that with the um, one more shade of color because if you do uh, darker than you need it's most likely it will be harder to make it lighter. So I use that same color uh, which I had for this rocks for the top to show in kind of uh, translucent, uh, translucency uh, of the uh, water so because it's bring some light uh, over the top uh, of this rock from the sunshine going to the water so this is my rock uh, be careful if you put some hermit crop here so don't color him because he is very light remember what you draw to overdo it and uh, here with this color uh, uh, which is I get from the old color from the rocks from this side I will add some uh, color here for the bottom and this is going to be the color uh, which is just the leftovers for my color uh, I use for First for fishes, then I add some uh, a little bit gray in that, and I got the color for uh, the rocks. Just for the shadows, uh, I put some darker color on the bottom. Again, this is the white and black, which is made gray. And I add some brown in it, uh, and that helped me to create that color for the rocks. So it's brown, white, and black. And for this one, it's brown, black, and a little bit of gray. That's my rocks. And then I will work on my green grass. I'm still gonna use uh, the small brush, but I'm gonna use the brush uh, which is has this kind of pointy uh, shape, and that's gonna help us to work with water. For uh, the water around these bubbles, I will still use the same colors. which I had already before from for the same spots because before I actually do the grass I need kind of get um, the right shape for it and because we were uh, working with the ocean it's few spots are kind of get lost so with the I did it on purpose because it's hard with the bigger brush to do it and uh, now with the small small brush I can uh, restore the shapes uh, of the uh, grass growing under the seaweed, under the water uh, grass uh, and just add some shape for uh, the ocean between that so it's going to be easy for them uh, for this uh, seaweed uh, pieces uh, to grow 
and then I use on the blue this intense blue here and that's gonna kind of clean the shape of for even fishes for us because uh, basically when we do fishes we uh, we might just have like some empty spots here uh, that's not a problem we can cover that uh, with the smaller brush later and then we had that other uh, blue color, a more uh, kind of emerald uh, blue color with the green. Remember we mix that uh, with the uh, green and that's uh, create that uh, blue green slash green color, like almost like emerald green color, which is really, really suitable for water. That's kind of marina. Uh, and even if you buy the painting uh, for uh, your house project, that's how it's called usually, because that's a kind of Caribbean blue color of the water, but on the surface water. So we use this for the layers uh, close to the surface from the bottom. So it's kind of we're going opposite direction this time and at the same time i kind of clear the shape of the fishes on the way so because that's gonna help us to finish our work when we don't have that many white spots on our picture and here uh very carefully uh, you kind of go around your um seaweed sketch and uh, just to bring it to the shape which is we're gonna use for the green color uh, and I'm gonna add this right now uh, and that's gonna be just a green uh, from the container and I will add to that uh, a little bit yellow Uh, I will show you what I mix here. So I mix the green with the yellow and I get that scissor salad color, like a very light lime color. And that's going to be my seaweed color. I will use that colorful seaweed because um, seaweed, um, it doesn't have the same uh, surface as the regular grass has because it's uh, grow in um, water so that's why when you painting that keep it that in your mind that it's not just a grass it's a grass growing under water so and it has a little bit different structure it's almost translucent in a certain way because it's grow underneath the water and it's uh, grow also on a rock right here that's what we decided to do and this fish is behind this uh, seaweed so then we can uh, draw over kind of sounds weird to do it but that's what our composition is we put the fish uh kind of behind this seaweed and that's what we're gonna do uh on our composition that it look like that so that that's why the seaweed right here going over the fish because it's uh the fish is hiding behind so that's what we have on our picture and I need more yellow and it's usually we uh, clean our brush before we get there so that we did uh, still uh, have the white and yellow in a good shape when we paint. We keep them clean and I will use that lighter shade uh, for my top of this grass uh, because it's closer to the 
surface so I want that to be a little bit lighter and the uh, uh, branches of the seaweed going closer to the rock I will make them dark and just like that we're gonna finish right here and I want to uh, maybe put some of them on the other side right here of this rock I don't know if it's gonna work guys because it's over the ocean already but I just want to try and see if it's gonna work so maybe it's gonna be just darker but still will be there uh, and then I need to clean up a little bit my ocean because uh, now it's um, kind of has the empty spots here so I want to clean that uh, and I still have one more left I still have that color so I still need to add some more I will add some more but um, that purple blue I still have here because sometimes it's dry so you can use it but if it's not so you can still use it so we'll see if it's on uh, the right shade yeah here it works So now it's just kind of clean up work and uh, I will use a little bit more purple for the spots right here and then when you do it it's like when we were working on the graphic the shades around the uh, lighter objects they help to create the shape of, of that lighter objects the darker uh, colors or um, strokes when you uh, draw uh, around the lighter subjects if you do them right they help for uh, creating the right um, shape for uh, things which is lighter so like here for instance we have the darker ocean around the seaweed and uh, working on the ocean help us to uh, get this grass uh, the shape the right shape it's appropriate for that because we uh, make the right background for that and that's why it's critical to cover the little white spots because they they are not what you need it's not what was the part of the plan uh, and uh, if they're there just because you forgot to cover uh, always do it or you can just dedicate that uh, to the end of your work time or you can do it on on the way you go with your painting until the color is dry on you uh, as I said uh, we uh, we need some uh, same color for the same spot over here so I will use some blue and dark blue and purple for this spot because this is just the bubbles comes from the fish or so and uh, they don't need that much space here as I left before so and we clean up a little bit the shape of the fish too and I want to add some black in that uh, if you add black in that purple blue uh, it's gonna be dark uh, dark purple and I will use it just a little bit for a uh, bottom part of the connection of the sand And that's going to help us to create uh, the right surface for uh, the darker parts of the ocean. And then I will clean up my brush and get a little bit lighter shades uh, for the spot uh, which is right here. And this is going to be that um, lighter blue here. And that helps us to finish these layers uh, of blue water. And water, uh, darker uh, substance, and uh, it's uh, not that translucent as the sky. Remember that when you work on your water. So it has the volume. It can be just very light because then it's not going to be 
look like water it's gonna look like a sky and remember that for your undersea world because this is a critical for creating your undersea world to do it with the right shades of color because if you do lighter it's gonna be sky if you make it opposite not all uh, make it darker on the bottom and lighter on the top that's gonna be sky too so we kind of really working on the right shades of colors here in this work because that's help us to create the environment uh, which is we're trying to build here with our colors we're creating the underwater environment and this is what we are trying to accomplish with our colors because these colors which is we choosing very carefully they create that underworld in uh, under sea world in my environment and it's help us to uh, get the right colors for our subject in the water uh, because uh, without it uh, that's not gonna be right environment right so this is what you have to remember when you work on your picture that it's not only colors it's something what you're trying to recreate with your picture in this case it's gonna be the ocean and we kind of snorkeling under the water not on surface uh, and that's why we need particular shades of color for our picture to uh, get the right impression of what you're trying to accomplish that's our task for today to create the under water environment with our colors only colors that's what we have and these colors which is we choosing carefully have to uh, get us the right impression of what we're doing so this is it for the ocean for now and i just want to do uh right now uh work on some uh, turtle in the hermit crops there and um, some shells are uh, the shells can be actually kind of pink color i will use my white and some orangey pink color i use for the fish and this is it this is that color i wanted you to see on my palette uh, right here it's orange with white and this is gonna be my crop color here and this okay. should be almost white Uh, now I want to work on my turtle and the turtle will be brown with the yellow so uh, it's going to be almost like a rock color here this is for the house and then I have to go the darker color for head and the legs um, I don't think so that's gonna work because that's gonna look like a house. I think that a uh, lighter color. We should use the lighter color for legs and um, the tail and her head. Yeah, that will be right. See that sometimes they have a little bit different colors, but it's up to us to choose what will be more suitable for your composition. And the same thing for the hermit crops here. He will be very light, so uh, we we can have it very light, like almost pink color too. That's the shells they have, and uh, now it's hard to see that because uh, we kind of uh, trying to work when it's still not really dry. 
uh, when we dry it will be easier to see what color we need for now i will just use um, that pink orangey pink for crop here and uh we need to uh and for hermit hermit crop the same uh and now i need to uh, really really uh, make the surrounding for the crop uh to finish the ocean right here so then it will be easy to see where he is something like that so in the sand in the sand um to finish the sand uh so that it will be easy to see where's the turtle about surroundings because the comparison between colors creating the shapes as you guys already know so we have to work hard on that always to uh, get just right enough support between your colors so that they all will create your shapes in the right way so like i'm doing now with the uh, shades of uh, the rocks right here because uh, this gonna help me to recreate um, the environment where the rocks are because they have some shade from all uh, the lights coming from the top and same thing will be here on this side the turtle will be surrounding one of the ocean color and uh, that's how we kind of highlight the turtle same thing this shell side they line down uh, on the ocean floor and the ocean floor have some shades uh, around them so that's gonna help us to make them noticeable otherwise we're not gonna be able to see them same thing with the crop here in the shade so don't put too many shades here because the rock is darker so it's kind of uh, shouldn't be uh, too dark because uh, the rock is darker than the floor of the ocean the ocean floor is lighter uh, and that will help us to create the right shapes Uh, and um, without actually uh, finishing the ocean floor, it's hard to locate uh, all these little details uh, with the object on this uh, ocean floor. If we don't finish uh, and don't cover the white uh, paper, because the white paper in that case it's gonna be like an extra color so we don't need that we want this to be just the ocean floor color and uh, this will help us when we uh, cover the uh, empty spots on the ocean floor so then we have the right shade of color for our ocean floor and the surroundings of this our water sign we don't need extra white pieces here because uh, that's another bubbles our bubbles are can stay white so I will do bubbles now and uh, they should be just white that's the bubbles uh, comes from the fishes and I think that um, we're kind of getting closer to the finishing our work uh, just uh, it comes with the details 
costume. Uh, give a little bit more character to our fishes. Don't overdo details. Always use a very gentle or uh, small brush for that. Uh, because otherwise it uh, will be hard to recreate what you already image. Same thing with the seaweed. I just need to add a little bit darker shade on the bottom here. And this one, I guess uh, on the other side it didn't really work. But I'm still trying to put some little bit of seaweed there. So I even like that highlight because that kind of uh, catch the sun ray from the water. So and this fish has the eye and the fins right here. They kind of translucent so don't overdo them. And uh, this fish are the black and white. I will use a little bit of white for my white part because it's kind of get lost a little bit if I'm acrylic. Because acrylic colors, they um, actually let you change things. So I work a little bit on the shapes right now. Uh, because they kind of get lost a little bit in the colors. Uh, we look out for the ocean. So um, I kind of recreate a little bit more on my shapes of fishes right now. And also I need to uh, get some shape to my crop. It's kind of red in a certain way. Not when he's already cooked, it just has some highlights, um, some pink highlights. And the hermit crop here too. And the last thing, I just want to get some shape to my turtle a little bit with my brown. Uh, interesting design on the top of their houses they wear <laughs> uh, they take them everywhere their house and it's brown but it has some dark spots in it that's what I want to do I want to just put some few dark spots on them just to recreate a little bit the shape our shape of the turtle and the legs we did uh, I was kind of hesitant but uh, I thought that the lighter shades uh, will be more appropriate for the turtle legs they kind of are a little bit brownish greenish color And that's what I'm trying to uh, do. And um, I think that I also need some lighter shade for the hermit crop. Because it's going to get lost a little bit on the rock. Right here. It has to be lighter. So... Uh, it's hard, but it's doable just to add some highlights on the top. Same thing with the crop here. He is a little bit lighter. And the turtle will have some lighter highlights on the top. It's not enough room to uh, do lots of, of design on that because that's a tiny spot we feel, have here. But still, you know, you want that to be uh, as close as we can uh, do for the total portrait. 
And I think that's all my task is accomplished for today. So I just want to show you uh, what the end product of this composition is. So what we were working today, we were working on undersea a world and i have this picture uh which is i was uh working uh with you today and uh our task was to uh create the undersea world uh with the uh, kind of like the nice environment uh over there uh with the bottom of the ocean with some rocks seaweed growing and some fishes and also important part was the recreate the right we uh how the water layers are laid out uh, in the water under the surface it's darker on the bottom and lighter on the top because the sun rays are goes through the ocean and let this water to be different and less uh light it gets it's darker it is the more light it gets it's uh lighter it's become and also have the seaweed growing underneath and uh, some fishes has some bubbles that's how they breathe there and the uh, crab and hermit crab and the turtles uh, the, uh, they are on the bottom and few shells are lying down it's all about uh, the right composition for your work because uh, the way how you put your uh, uh, subject on uh, the uh, piece of paper will be um the significant way to create the right composition and they'll give enough room to, for everything in your work because the rocks they kind of enters to the composition fishes goes to different direction and uh the seaweed it's a kind of uh create some environment underwater the environment and all this uh important parts of your composition play a uh, big role so uh before you actually uh, finish with the drawing look if it looks inviting and interesting or if you don't think so uh, just exchange few spots don't make fishes are uh, the same uh try to use the different species for your uh, picture and that's gonna create the more interesting color wise composition because i use different colors for my fishes to make it more interesting try to uh, get fishes a uh, lighter than the water because if they're gonna be blue guess what are gonna happen they're just gonna get lost uh on the water so yellow orange i recommend stripes that's a good color too so uh and just like that uh have some fun and create your underwater environment and don't forget about uh, important details that the water has to be darker on the bottom and lighter on the top. Thank you for listening and see you next time.